I want to start the video with a little demonstration. If anybody has ever played with RC knows this is a throttle. And pay attention to the angle of this main propeller. So as I increase the throttle, you notice the angle of the blade increases and that increases lift. It makes sense. So when you increase the throttle, not only this spin faster and the blade angle increases as well. And if you notice this piece inside here, when I increase the throttle, every, every single, it pushes on all three blades at the same time, increase angle equally. Okay, I'll explain why that's a uh, So this is my take on what I think caused Kobe Bryant's helicopter to crash. If you read the investigation report, all the story is very similar, but I think none really address why the helicopter first entered a climb and then it went into a dive left that's a uh, I was actually I didn't come up with this so I was so eager to find out but it says the investigation will take two years and that's so I tried to google some theories at this and I found an article on flying and pilot map it says is, it has some couple reasons. So, <clears throat> for spatial disorientation in the fog, I think everybody all know that already. And the third one really caught my eye. It says the helicopter may have climbed too fast and caused it to enter a irrecoverable stall. And before the research, I did not know. I I think that's a really key. Oh, let's go back. So at first I thought it's the fog. Everybody think it's the fog, but, it, and it says the police helicopter is grounded. Then I, the story goes to the pilot is ready for instrumentation and can train, he's trained to fly in the fog. So that's not an issue. Then go back to the report, it says, the helicopter went into climb and gaining approximately 1,000 feet in 36 seconds. Then it returned to 1,400 feet 8 seconds later. Then, then the helicopter made a descending turn to the left. The helicopter entered a dive at 945, descending at a rate 4,000 feet per minute with the ground speed 160 knots before it struck the hillside. <clears throat> okay, so at that point I thought, oh, it must be engine failure. That's what caused it, the helicopter entering the dive. <clears throat> but it also, the latest report on February 7 says there's no evidence of engine failure because <clears throat> The viewable section of the engine and the prop was uh, intact before impact, and and the prop was rotating at impact, so it, that's not the case. Then let's go back to the stall theory. <clears throat> so compared to before. Compared to, as opposed to this, see, this is 
the pro the prop is fixed pitch, meaning if I give more throttle, it spins faster and producing more thrust, and it always go up. There's no. But compared to the helicopter, it's a bit different. <clears throat> so when you turn on the throttle, not only this spins faster, this blade also changes angle. And you can do this experiment holding a plate or some for your hand in a when your car traveling highway speed, you will know if you slightly angle you will feel a little bit lift from your hand and the more you increase actually you feel it pushing it back on your hand instead of lift so that at this point creates drag <clears throat> same with this and uh, there's a certain point where the angle could be too high and not it actually doesn't create more lift and helicopter will stall will fall downward. <clears throat> Another aspect is called retreating blade stall. <clears throat> if you if you know when this spins counterclockwise, this blade is going and the carbon car turning forward, this blade is going against the wind and that helps lift. But this blade is going away from the travel. So the faster you go, this side of the blade, it's called retreating blade, actually has less lift due to it's moving away from the wind. And you will see if it's this side is has less lift, it will cause the helicopter to tilt this way and turning left. And this is, I think this is important because it says Counterclockwise rotating system as in most American made helicopters will dive left. And it matches the report. The <clears throat> and also it's saying witness reported helicopter engine was sputtering before crash. <clears throat> so it could be engine failure or I was thinking he, here he actually says when when the blade is stalling, it will shudder. That could be the sound the witness is hearing. The helicopter is falling, the blade is turning, still struggling against the wind. And shudder in the blade causes that sputtering sound. <clears throat> Also, I went to look up the specs of the Sikorsky S-76 helicopter. It says the maximum speed is 155 knots. But as we've seen in the report, it's, it was actually at 160 knots when it impacted the ground. I won't wonder, did they enter a dive starting at 160 knots or it impact the ground 160? So, but either way, we know at the impact, it was probably going too fast to be recoverable. Also, I was looking at the climb rate spec. It says the initial climb rate of the helicopter is 1350 feet per minute and if you look at the report it says initially the helicopter went into a climb gaining 1000 feet in 30 seconds I calculate that's about 1600 feet per minute that also exceeds the climb rate specification and I think the reason being is we all know he was flying following the ground but the ground is getting higher and so he have to climb and when he climbs he will fly into the fog and he won't able to see outside and also the ground I think it's 
makes sense. Everybody that you will turn the throttle all the way up because you cannot see and you know the ground is coming up fast. And maybe this is why he will turn full throttle and that in turn can lead to stalling. And I, I really think this theory makes sense because it's not just their spatial disorientation because if he was falling, he, he knew there was a mountain, that's why he started to climb. And if it was just simple or spatial orientation, it should be he thought there was mountain, but he didn't change elevation. And he was flying not into the mountain, but because he was disoriented, he hit the mountain while not attempt to change altitude at all. But here he clearly tried to climb. So it's not just simple spatial orientation. <laughs> And if you ever look at the airline landing video, my my friend asked me this question: Why the co-pilot or the computer needs to call out the altitude reading while the pilot while the while the pilot is flying? Is it so difficult to multitask? I think in this case. Yes, because he have to concentrate looking out the window, make sure at the same time he need to look at the gauges, the speed, the climb rate, and you cannot look at everything at once, which is could be why the pilot choose to turn the throttle all the way up, that's to avoid. The last note I would like to say is people always, people seems to blame the fog and the decision making. They think he should have turned back or she should have take off. I, I would like to use an example. Say you, you bought a ticket to your favorite game and on the day you're about to leave the house, it starts to rain really hard. Are you going to say that's too much risk? I'm not going to, I'm just going to stay home and skip the game. You're probably thinking I have driven in the game, in the rain before. And it's a, it's riskier, but you was, you can manage. And then so you're driving and suddenly a pedestrian jump out from the parking or a costly pull up, you break, but as we know, in the rain, the, you have less braking power. So, you, say you could have stopped in time if it was dry payment, but in the rain, you hit the car and had the accident. Does that mean, does that mean it's your fault that you should have stayed at home and skipped the ball game because it's raining? <clears throat> so that's how I think it's not pilot's fault that he decided to take off in the fog.